Uh, thank you everybody for joining us tonight as we dive into uh, episode 10 of Masters of Dread. Uh, and before we pick up the story, I will do a very quick recap. But before we do that, I do want to go ahead and introduce two of our players, though we will have a guest player show up at some point tonight. Our two main players um, are going to be below me. Uh, my name is Trevor. I am your forever DM uh, and the, the master of ceremonies here at Rolling with Advantage. And it has been my uh, fun job to tell the story, and I am really, really digging it and looking forward to seeing what more hijinks these characters can get into. Uh, but with that, let's get to our players. Uh, below me, we have, in the black shirt... Hey, I'm Danny. I play Durandal, the Dampier Swarm Keeper Ranger. Dampier and, uh, Swarm Keeper Ranger. Okay. So if you're looking to build, like, Alucard, some sort of Van Helsing, or some sort of Batman, I, I highly, highly recommend it. I have I really enjoyed seeing the Swarm Keeper Dampier Ranger in action. And and what shirt are you sporting tonight? I see a black shirt. It says Temple of... Uh, Dog it... Sothoth. Oh! Providence. Now, yeah. did you, you got that on your, your pilgrimage to Rhode Island. You went to Lovecraft Country. Yes. Oh, that is yeah. amazing. I'm so jealous. Okay. All right. So we'll see what Durandal gets up to tonight. Now, below him in the, uh, is that, I guess that's a blue shirt and the hat and the glasses, the big burly beard we have. Hi, I'm Wes, and I'm playing Ziv, the dapper barbarian of the wild magic variety. He is dapper. Nah. The thing that I love about Ziv, you wouldn't know he's a barbarian until he rages in combat. I that I love that about that character. He just seems he is such a good character that a lot of times I forget he's a barbarian. Uh, and I think that's pretty solid. Incognito barbarian. An incognito barbarian, right. All right, so those are our players. Um, for those of you who have been following us, I really appreciate um, everyone kind of following along with the stories. We jump into episode 10 tonight. Uh, if you want to catch up on past episodes, you can catch up with our podcast. Uh, you look up Rolling with Advantage wherever you find that we are on everything at this point, all the platforms. You can also catch up on previous episodes on our YouTube channel, Rolling with Advantage, or you can watch us live on Twitch at 8.30 on Monday nights. All right. So with that, we are going to dive in. We will have a guest player coming later, but we will wait to introduce that person until it is the opportune moment. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to dive back into a familiar place. We're going to dive back into Waterdeep. And as we go into Waterdeep in the, in the realm of Faerun, um, we, we, we kind of zoom into the, the massive city and we go to uh, this little shady area which has the Troll Skull Manor. And that is where we're going to pick up our story tonight as we dive back in to the Troll Skull Manor. Now, as we come into the Troll Skull Manor, we hear the, the regular music playing. Um, you see uh, Marcus um, sh kind of sheepishly looking about the crowd, a little bit of sweat above his brow. Now, he is the troubadour and the bard and the very gregarious person who's been telling the story over this many weeks and has kind of gotten a massive crowd here. But one thing that you'll notice is that a few familiar faces are missing and Marcus seems to be a little distraught over the fact that some of the people are missing. And uh, he looks about everyone and, and he's just kind of asking about and you can hear uh, voices kind of going uh, roaring in the room as, as Marcus goes about and he goes, excuse me, have you, have you seen, have you seen Sunshine? She has not been around. Where has she been? And have you, have you seen Lord, Lord Baylor? I haven't seen him around either. And people are saying, oh, they, they haven't seen them either. And he, he finds it very curious. And, and before that, uh, he takes the center stage and he looks about to everyone and he, uh, he goes ahead and motions to the people and the, the bards in the back to lower lower the music. And as the, the music lowers, um, uh, he, he brings up his own music, uh, casting uh, his, his ghost sound as he begins to cast the orb about him. And as he does that, uh, you hear this, this chant come in, which we have heard several times as, he, as the music of Horik here, this desert domain. And as he begins to summon uh, his orb, he pauses for a second and he says, I guess I must warn you that the mist of... Of, of this domain, of all of these domains of dread. They seem to find people who have heard the stories, and I'm afraid that if you've heard these stories, you may also be called into one of these domains of dread, and I, I hope that the friends here that are absent tonight have not also been pulled in to this domain, but we will continue tonight. And as he does that, he pulls the orb open, and as he pulls the orb open, you see this, this yellow light uh, kind of like coming out of the orb, and as the orb grows bigger and bigger, um, you're looking into the desert of Harak here, and it is night. And uh, at this night, the, the, the orange and the yellow glow that we see is of a city that is burning. And we return now to the city of Muhar. 
And as we return to the city of Muhar, um, it, while the map we're showing here is, is shows bright and sunny, it is actually night. And, and what we see is we see the, the flames uh, coming off of the canvases of the building, uh, remnants of the attack that happened only moments before as a, a celestial was summoned, a, a proclaimed... Um, maybe a servant of the old god or one of the old gods themselves was summoned into the city itself and, 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 and ravaged the city until the priestess of Octopot was able to come out and, and, and summon the reinforcements. The, the minions of Octopot, the, the denizens, the undead denizens, showed and did battle with the Celestial and is mass chaos in the city and not just in the city itself, but also we see... Um, a lots of, uh, of surrounding caravans and, and there's other villages that are surrounding the city as well as they are um, kind of in chaos and wondering what is happening in the city of Muhar. And with that, uh, we will pick up the story. And where we're going to pick up the story tonight is we're going to pick up the story with Durandal. Now, Durandal, you had just uh, scaled the outer walls of the city. Uh, you had just escaped the palace, uh, and you had pilfered their storehouse of the Amulet of the Gods. Now, this amulet was something that uh, seemed to cause a lot of, of, of interest, uh, and, and it might be a clue as to what would happen, uh, as everyone here is still searching for the soul of Octopot the Ka. And as this might be a clue into finding that, but as you pick this up, uh, you, again, I want to pull this out and so everyone can see um, this, this image, this golden image of this, this, this necklace that is pulled out. It seems to have something to do with the old gods. Uh, it is rumored that it, you saw this uh, similar uh, emblem on the sword that Ziv pulled out of the desert only days before. Uh, and, and now we see this as well. And so we pick up the story. It is night. You are on the other side of the wall, outside of the palace. You're slumping down into the shadows. And you pull out this amulet, who is still hot to the touch. Uh, and as you are gazing into it, uh, what would you like to do? Um, <clears throat> let me do some sort of um, arcana check on it. Just to see if I know anything. Even though my arcane is very awful. Okay. Just peer into the magic itself. You definitely sense um, some type of magic coming off of it, but you don't... There is a, a burning sensation in the air whenever you, you sense arcane magic, and you don't feel that. While you, this is definitely radiating some type of energy, you don't feel this necessarily arcane energy. Okay. Hmm. Does it feel like more divine? Uh, give me a religion check. It is possible with your roll of 10 um, that it could be divine magic. One thing you do sense as you're sitting there is you feel more at, uh, more calm and at peace than you have in, in many days. In fact, you haven't felt this peaceful since you first picked up that blade. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. I am going to try to... Uh... I know where um, Ziv is, and so I'm going to try to head up that way to see if now, I can find him. Ziv, you are basically outside. You're right outside the wall here. This is where you just scaled over, okay? There's still chaos happening inside the city. The city is still burning. It's kind of the, the dying down of what had just happened. Um, and scuffling on the other side of the wall, you hear uh, rocks falling on the wall as you look up, and you see uh, a very large individual... Uh, climbing to the top of the wall and scaling down and kind of a, a, a big loud thud next to you as Ziv has also left the building and now he is with you outside on the outskirts of town. Now as you slide down, now Ziv, you were able to use this opportunity to kind of uh, investigate and, and, and peruse the temple itself to see what you could uh, figure out uh, and to kind of learn more. You did see several other hieroglyphics inside the temple itself. They looked newer um, and, and seemed to be pointing all towards the direction of, you know, kind of the new deities of Octopod. One thing you did find interesting as uh, you were kind of being guided on a guided tour is it seems that the new gods uh, that have kind of taken over all seem to have been put there in place by the pharaoh Octopot and may actually have been some of his uh, high priests that were kind of elevated into that deityhood. Uh, you found that very interesting that these were just people that were placed in a higher position. Um, 
Now, when all of the chaos took place, um, you did, uh, the person that was showing you around uh, left out of the chaos. You were able to walk by and you saw one area that had some oils, uh, a couple of jars of oils on the table. Not knowing what they were, but sensing they might be worth something, you grabbed those two vials of oil and then jumped out of uh, out of here. So you uh, you liberated a couple of, of, of vials of oil um, from the priestess. They were kind of sitting on, looked like some type of altar or something, but they looked interesting. They were in very ornate vials. So you just grabbed them and ran. Uh, and that, at that point, the two of you are together on the outskirts, right on the other side of the wall. Uh, what would you like to do? Uh, first, I'm going to take the sword and hand it to him. Okay, oh, so well, I, I was thinking we had to go back in, but... All right, so he pulls out the giant great sword, uh, the, the magical sword that has a name, uh, Galvin, the Lightbringer. He brings out this giant great sword out of this tiny little bag of holding, and he, and he gives you the sword back, and now Ziv brandishing this great sword. What would you like to do? I'm going to ask him if he was able to retrieve the amulet. Yes. I'm going to pull that out and show him. So this is the I first time that you're seeing the amulet as well. I want to take the amulet while I have the sword and see. Okay. Okay. Because I know that they have the same. So Ziv, you grab the amulet. There is heat coming off of the amulet itself. Um, you also, as you're holding it, um, there's something that you feel like this energy radiate between your uh, up and down both of your arms and, and, and around like a very specific like pattern on your back mm -hmm. as you're holding it. Um, and you sense that 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 itching sensation and the burning of silver, all of that just seems to melt away as you hold that. Uh, as soon as that is out of Durandal's possession, um, you feel frustrated and angry and, and, and you find your hand gripping the scimitar again. I believe, friend, as long as you have that on you, that purses are lifted. I'll give it the hell back. <laughs> no, no. I'd probably want him to keep it, you know, with the dagger. Keep it, friend. Keep it. I, with your Popeye I arms. You. I'll, uh, I'll put it on. Okay. So that it's out of sight. All right, so you you put it on and under your under your desert robes. Uh, as soon as you put it on, it, it seems to start cooling. As soon as it, it's covered from the night air, uh, it doesn't seem to be as hot as while it's not being shown. Uh, but now you do feel differently. You feel more like yourself. You've been carrying this this kind of itching you know sensation on your arms for a while, and now that is gone. I want to grab the music box out of my. Back. You pick up the silver music box, the, the silver that normally burns you, it no longer burns you. Should we try to see if it was permanent? <laughs> uh, I want to know if, um, Durandal, do you think we should return into the town? As Ziv says that, there is this large commotion that is happening uh, on the outskirts. You see, uh, Durando, you look up and you see large, like, bat-like creatures flying about. Uh, you see these skeletal wings um, uh, coming out of these, these monsters as they fly over the town. And uh, you take a minute as you look at one of them. Uh, give me a nature check. This should be something I know. Nope. A 14. Uh, whatever just flew over you, um, it you could have sworn it was made of stone as it flew over. Um, you had heard tale of these in your traveling uh, gargoyles, I believe they are. Uh, what? What? Now, Durandal, okay. you saw that because you're so aware uh, because of mm -hmm. the Yoonstone that are flying about. Uh, you spotted something and Ziv kind of looks like questioning what just happened. Ziv, have you ever heard of gargoyles? Is that a minstrel group? <laughs> no. No. Uh, True I tried. I tried. They're flying stone bat creatures. That sounds terrible. 
Yes. So more and more of those are flying in as well as uh, you, you seem to hear uh, the sounds of, of beating hooves against uh, what sounds like it should be on the ground, but is echoing from above as it seems like uh, you're hearing the sounds of hoof coming over like in the, in the, in the, in the night sky. My friend, I think we should get away from the town. I don't. Should we head north? To the I feel oasis? bad for the people that are in there, though. What should we I do? I do too. Do we have a way of getting back to that area without being? You could double back around town and go through the front gate, or you could try to scale somewhere else along the walls. Uh, you're basically uh, the, the the furthest end. If you wanted to move. You know, uh, so just kind of show you this over here on the back end of the city is where you are on the outside of the walls. You could kind of move south down by the walls and then scale uh, closer up to where the uh, the entrance of the the heretics keeping. We're calling them them for now, but the followers of the old gods uh, had an underground uh, cat like catacomb area over here. Whoops, that you could try to get to if if, if you want to try to get back to your allies? Question mark. <laughs> should we go check on them or should we eat it surely they have another exit to their lair perhaps it's best I mean I, from all the commotion I am assuming you freed the one that was trapped yes I think they can take care of themselves I think we should try to find Baltazar and leave this area now as soon as you say that uh durandal again the 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 hairs on the back of your neck stand up as you look over your shoulder you see what looks to be some type of a winged skeletal beast not a stone one like before perched of, above you on the wall above you and he seems to be like sniffing into the air and looks down as you as you look up, you also feel like some type of like slime, like almost like drip onto you as you look up at this, like a, it's almost like a flying zombie where it's still kind of oozing uh, as you look up and you see it's kind of sniffing and it's looking for you, uh, but it seems like it, it doesn't have eyes. Like it's maybe it's, it's sniffing for you as it's, as it's looking for you. I'm going to go. All right, so, so Durandal, you, you kind of motion, you know, to be quiet, and you look up as you do that. Uh, Ziv, uh, you kind of slowly peer up, and you see this thing, and as you look at it, you realize that it has two arms. It also has these other two smaller arms that are kind of, like, unfurling out from under that uh, as it's kind of, like, reaching out in the air. So this four-armed beast with these massive wings coming out of the back, these skeletal wings are kind of looking about, kind of sniffing over the air, and and and, and it, it, it seems to be, like, sniffing. It seems to be closer and closer. It seems to be peering into uh, Ziv. It's kind of like leaning over into Ziv's direction. But back along down the wall towards the outside of town. You back along. As soon as you start backing up, um, the the thing like cricks its neck and you hear this and it kind of looks and it seems to be sniffing as you moved. Uh, it sensed that you were moving and it starts like like kind of crawling across the air and it, and it lets out this this like this guttural like, like this, this screech uh, that's going off um, Durandal, what would you like to do? Um, I'm going to scale up there. It's sitting on the wall. It is. Um, because my scimitar wants to, uh, correct. It thinks it's, it's, uh, weak to pull out my bow. So I'm going to, uh, so you, you, you brandish your, your scimitar of vengeance, and as you brandish that, uh, you begin to very deftly uh, scale up the side of the wall. And as you scale up the side of the wall, um, you, you look at the, to kind of get the gripping on the wall, there is like this large, like, almost sounds like a, like this impact of an explosion. As you look up, something hit the side of this thing, and you see this energy like bust out the side of this thing as, is, as part of its rib cage, uh, rib cage just explodes and starts falling out. More guts are kind of falling over you. As you do, you, because you still have the Yonestone of Awareness, you look over your shoulder, you see a very small individual um, standing between the dunes, uh, uh, smoke kind of emanating from its hands. As you look over, you see a very small individual. Uh, Brian, please describe your character. Brian! Everybody, chat, welcome Brian to the table. Uh, Brian from our Discord is coming in uh, from, from 
being in our one shot, he is coming into guest star for us tonight. And Brian, who are you going to be playing for us tonight? Tonight, I am playing Gazmir Nefakari, a fifth level deep gnome celestial warlock. There we go. All right, so we have a fifth level deep gnome celestial warlock who just shows up for his his guest appearance to help the the intrepid adventurers. Um, and with a blast comes out, uh, explodes the side of of this uh, this this undead beast. It kind of falls back on uh, off the wall. Uh, Durandal, you're looking over and you see him. Um, seems to be a friend who just blasted one of these uh, undead things. Uh, and Ziv, you immediately instinctively pull out the blade as you just kind of see this over uh, over your shoulder and you kind of look and see that. So with that, um, Ziv, what would you like to do? Uh, I'm getting away from the wall for one. Okay, so you step, you step, you're, so you've got this the little small thing over here that just blasted him. So you're kind of stepping away from the wall and half a step closer to whoever this is. Um, anything else? I'm keeping my eye on the wall as I keep looking and running back and holding my sword towards the wall. Gotcha. And Durandal, what are you doing? Is you're still kind of on the wall, kind of like shaking off some of the slime and the snot that just kind of blew off onto you. He slimed me. Um, <laughs> I'm going to hop down Okay. and uh, look at the gnome and say, I trust your aim was true and you weren't aiming at me. Uh, my my aim is never off, especially dealing with the, uh, uh, the, the, the great uh, usurper's undead minions. Oh, I like the sound of that, friend. Well, you're more than welcome to stay with us if you need to. What are you doing in these parts? Um, <clears throat> uh, my friends, uh, my friends here reside within the city. Uh, and you, as you kind of look and see Gaz, um, he kind of looks at Ziv. And you're kind of used to seeing people look at Ziv a little differently but you see gaz looking at the sword in particular that um ziv is carrying and you see kind of um you see him kind of like mouth the words Galvin. so ziv you instinctively know it seems that he recognizes the blade that you carry have you two met each other i i feel as if we're we're old friends I, I can't believe you have the blade. How did you come across this artifact? Now, as as you kind of get caught up in this, uh, you suddenly pull yourself back in the moment that there are several flying things about. Right. Um, right. There is a, you, you had come here to bring them back to safety. Um, the, the head of this, uh, Akim, had actually uh, sent you to, to see if you could help retrieve them. There's a, like a little safety camp they have. Uh, there's old rampart walls of, of an older city outside of town that they've, some of the uh, followers of the old guide have kind of collected there as a, as a place to uh, find shelter right now while everything is going on in town. So, uh, Gazmir, you've come to kind of bring them back there. So as you're getting caught up in like, oh, you're seeing this blade for the first time, you suddenly recall like, this is not a good place to be. Quickly, quickly, bring the blade with us. I must take you to safety. We have a couple under routes throughout the city. Come, come, come with me, great heroes. So with this, he actually takes you into what looks to be like some type of mine shaft. And uh, there's this, uh, you're following this small little gnome as he's kind of going through these under tunnels. Uh, Durandal and Ziv, you see him kind of like open up this, this like small, like in the dirt itself, you see him like pull up in this gate and he's kind of motioning you to, to follow him. Um, what would you like to do? How large is this tunnel? Um, it's, 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 you'll have to duck. Um, okay. It's gnomish. It's not gnomish size. He's. I don't want to get wedged in here. I'm claustrophobic. I, <laughs> perfect. We need the poo. <laughs> You're not claustrophobic. Uh, you are. You are claustrophobic. But this is. You'll be okay. All right. So the two of you uh, carefully uh, follow uh, uh, Gazmir into the, the tunnels and it kind of turns different ways. Uh, and as the three of you go, uh, as soon as you go in, the the sword seems to illuminate everything around you. Uh, Gasmir the blade, whether you're holding it on your back, it's just there's a light that emanates off of it as you're going through these tunnels. 
uh, within a few quick moments, uh, just uh, maybe a hundred yards or so uh, from the town, uh, you see uh, Gasmir kind of go and, and open up another door that opens back up into the night. And as that happens, you see uh, campfires uh, lighting up and you see several uh, tents. Uh, you see what looks to be the, the broken part of a wall and a rampart. There's actually a gate uh, that's opened. Uh, the, the wall doesn't fully connect anymore. It's more just ruin. Uh, but it is a good place that they've kind of set up some camps. You see several people walking about town, uh, uh, camp, as it were, uh, stoking several fires. Uh, you also see there seems to be uh, an inn uh, or a house and a like, part stable that has been opened up next to it. Uh, you look around, you see horses over there. In fact, you see your horse, uh, Durando. You look and you see that Equinox is being cared for in the stable outside of this inn. Uh, you see several familiar faces of some of the people that you saw below the city of Muhar. They seem to all have come here for, uh, for shelter. Is this inside or outside? Uh, it's outside. You've kind of gone under the tunnels. You're back outside now, but it's still night. Is it wise to have a campfire with smoke? Um, that's a great question. You should probably ask that. I did. I asked it out loud. <laughs> so you just wow. said that. Um, well, it's and, nighttime, so they can't see the smoke. And it's a good thing they can't smell very well. So. Right. Good thing these creatures don't smell very well. Or else they can There's find There's not, like, fire. large bonfires going, but it is several lights. and like It is a valid concern. So you, the, that's the first thing to your thought. Yeah. Is the leader of the group that we saw in the... You do, you, you do, Akeem. You see Akeem. Akeem. Uh, as soon as the three of you pop out, uh, you say, he says, uh, Gasmir, Gasmir, thank you, thank you. you, you found them, you found them. Please, 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 come, come, come. Uh, we, have, we have dinner and, and shelter, please, please. Um, and and he, you see, uh, as soon as, as he motions, you see a couple of uh, ladies running with blankets uh, and trying to, like, cover you. Uh, to like to hide you and like to hide the blade from the night, uh, and they're, they're kind of like rushing you into this inn. Um, now, Durandal, you you see this as these women are coming, kind of like trying to cover you. Or, what's your take? They're covering me as well, and not yeah. just him. Yeah. Um. Well, well, well. Thank you. I suppose. What? And uh, oh. as as he kind of pushes all of us in, he's like this this flying flying folk about we heard a tale of uh, of riders in the sky uh, we don't know what they are we've never seen them before we believe the the octopus guardians uh, we've only heard tale of them but they seem to be here where we come from these are known as gargoyles some of them gargoyles what? and uh as soon as you say say that uh sabif the elder vendor that you met before, he is there and he's like, no, 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 not gargoyles. Those, those are rock creatures. This is something else, I tell you. I saw, I saw this lights coming from a, some type of spectral horse in the sky. The wild hunt. Right. Spectral horse. A unicorn, mm. perhaps? You ever heard of anything like this, Siv? I've heard of unicorns. I don't know if they're real or not. As they're having this conversation, Gasmir, you're kind of, you're just kind of, you're used to kind of being lost whenever like the big folk are talking. Uh, as you're kind of shorter, uh, do you wish to interject in this conversation? They're trying to figure out what this is that's flying. How about. tall is Gasmir? Gasmir is three foot eight, about forty-one. <laughs> Felt awesomely sinewy pounds. No, he has an eight strength. He's got a bit of a gut. A bit of a gut. So, so he's like a barely above my knee. Like literally, um, <laughs> yeah, like the toddler, like running around, no, like it's about mid thigh. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like mid thigh. Right, right. Yeah, maybe a third. <laughs> um, I um, I look. And uh, my uh, Gazmir's um, attention is focused towards the artifact. Um, this is the first time that I've seen this artifact, um, and um, I tell I, I tell Ziv um, that um, Ziv, I'm very interested uh, in this artifact that you found. I've spent many years searching for this blade, um, and and um, 
and for you to uh, um, for you to have this blade upon you is a sure sign that the uh, that the, the rule of Antikapat will soon be over. I believe this is part of uh, the prophecy. I'm gonna put the blade like <laughs> blade down to use to sit down. So uh, you're inside like a, a, like a small tavern. It's it's like a it's a it's a house. It has a roof. There's a barkeep. Um, very rudimentary uh, compared to what. Yeah, you've I'm seen gonna before. sit on the floor like crisscross right. applesauce style. All right, so you you just basically go <laughs> sit down on the floor. Uh, there's a table. There's a couple of people sitting at the table. All some people that you kind of recognized before. And as everyone is there, uh, you hear some some women kind of shuddering as they they have more sounds overhead. Uh, and and other people are kind of milling around outside. And you hear Akim say, "Just act normal. Just act normal. We we all." We're all servants here. We're all servants here. He's like just trying to tell everyone just to act normal. Um, and as that I, is happening... You... I don't know what he's talking about. So I have the sword across my lap and I'm talking to this new person I just met. Right. So at this point, let's go back into the conversation uh, between Durandal Ziv and, and Gazmir. So Gazmir, you're talking about this blade and some prophecy. Uh, Durandal, what do you say to that? You say, what can you tell us about this blade and this prophecy? We seem to be a bit in the dark. Well, first, let me tell you how we found it. It was in some dung. Dung, you say? Yes, a very large pile of dung. I've... I, the god... The old gods truly are funny. There were many things in that. We didn't go looking through it all. It was terrible. Disgusting. I don't want to know where it came from. Now, Gasper, but, uh, you find this interesting because there's only one thing out here that could have swallowed that it would have been the the sand kraken I and mean, you know this you've you've heard tale of a gigantic worm that might be big enough to swallow cities i believe i believe you found the sword in what remains of what we call the desert kraken <clears throat> it may have been uh we uh it may have it may have been a party or another uh, uh, another large uh, monster that th it could have preyed upon, but truly the god the old gods are shining upon us. If Ziv, you found this great blade in the giant steaming hunk of desert kraken dung, do you want to hold it? Uh, yes. And you see, uh, <laughs> Gaz take out a small uh, uh, clothespin and put it on his nose. Oh, it doesn't stink anymore. We've cleaned it. We've cleaned it. Oh, oh, oh yes, 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 yes. And you see, <laughs> I wouldn't touch something. And, you, and you, see, uh, you see he has, like, small um, brushes, like bone brushes, uh, archaeological-type uh, instruments. You see him with a fine uh, touch of almost a, a, a surgeon, uh, kind of delicately putting his hands and, and over the runes and the etchings of the blade. Oh, I think this goes with it too, and I'll pull out the uh, the amulet. You see, Gaz, Gaz, just like, what? What have I been doing for the last fifteen years? <laughs> my God, he's like the old gods, my old God. Like he, he can't believe. Gaz cannot believe the coincidence of these two artifacts being together. He spent, I've spent years, Ziv, of my life searching for these items. Is there anything else you're looking for? Maybe Durandal has it in his bag. We could check. I really do love fezes. There's a nice hat. Uh, <laughs> my head does get quite cold. You can have mine. I'm going to put it on his head. Okay, so, so basically it looks like it's a like lamp. bucket head. Yeah. All right. Yeah. All right, so, uh, in a lampshade. Now... Yes, sir, you you have heard of the sword, and you find this this amulet as well, and you immediately recognize that the amulet seems to have the same design as the the symbol that's in the hilt of the blade itself, right? Like the center gem is that same design. Now, one thing that you find interesting about this is that you have seen uh, hieroglyphics of this design, and it seems to reference one of the old gods. <clears throat> Do I know uh, which old god in particular it references? Uh, give me a history check. Okay. Mm 
Uh, all right, so that is an 18. That's a 14 plus 4 uh, for your history check. Um, you believe that it is... You've seen different variations of this symbol, uh, but it seems that this is... You don't know the name, but you have just kind of referred to it as, as you've kind of like... Other people you've talked to kind of refer to the sun god as Sol, S-O-L. And you believe that that might be um, what the hieroglyphs referred to as as the sun god. Okay, I um, I relate this information um, to Ziv um, and Durandal, and also uh, is Hakeem uh, with us as well? Yes, yes, he's standing over okay. as well. Okay, so um, I would I would uh, relay this information, um, uh, especially to the resistance leader, um, and just uh, tell them what I uh, my um, my idea for what this is. Well, so, we have it now. What's the next step? I've slowly been trying to put this puzzle together, and I feel that I have two of the three pieces. Uh, I know that these, I know that the great sword will become a useful tool for a champion um, to usher in the new era and to free the people from Antipat's rule. <clears throat> you said two of three. What? What is the third? I know that the champion... I, I do not know the champion's true name, but I know that with these items in hand with the champion is what will be needed to turn the tide against the great fetid pharaoh. So... So you... Yeah. We don't know the third item, what it might be. Well, it sounds like it's a person. Uh, I believe, I believe it is. I believe it is a person or a being of some great power. This answer has still eluded me, and is I have yet to find the answer to this riddle. It keeps me and drives me in my mission. Is there any reference to how one would know? or to a name or well let's not I use if you're of middling power now hand it over well it, i need another weapon i don't have one right now um i don't have another weapon right now do i no you don't mm -mm. so is this like a should ziv wield the weapon well, I mean, until we find who needs it. I I believe Ziv may be the champion. I I have no... I My guesses are still out there. And as far as eight hours before today, I am now two-thirds closer to solving this puzzle. I believe you are here for a reason, Ziv. And Durandal. I believe now, I... we have been brought here for a reason. I forgot, you did go back previously and uh, the servants of the old gods had gotten you a great axe. Uh, remember the giant lumberjack axe that you had gotten? So you do oh, have another uh, weapon. Okay. However, if no one's going to be using this magical well, sword, right? Uh, yeah. So, and then Akeem goes, All right, so you believe that, that this Ziv is the champion? I he be different. I don't know. I... Do you believe it is him or is it someone else? This is something I very hate in my inner soul to say, but I don't know. We'll have to ponder on this and I, I believe we will need to find a new place to to gather. This this where we are right now is, is too close to town. I believe we need to find find safety elsewhere. Um, Akeem, yes. did Tosit and Salto make it? Not yet. Not yet. Uh, we we sent word to meet here, but we have not seen them yet. No. Um, mm -hmm. That bothers me. I like both of them very much. Oh, we all do. We're, we're missing several. Only about half are here. There, are also several of our explorers. We sent word to find. We we had sent several out of our uh, more fighting men to go out and and women, of course, to to go out and find uh, other places that we might call home, a refuge, or 
I dare say, a base of operations. Okay. Well, there's many buried ruins, from what I'm hearing. Yes, yes, we're trying to find one that would be safe, and um, we've heard tale there are certain places that Octopot's minions won't venture, places that seem to be sanctified or holy in some way. We're seeking those Didn't out. Didn't I hear about this to the north? Didn't someone say something about an area to the north that was uh, holy ground or something? I, I seem to recall Durandal. Help me out here. You know my memory is terrible. I believe it was um, northeast above the oasis, if I remember correctly. Oh, the bent temple. That is must what that, I believe that is what you are referring to. Now, as you're doing that, uh, Ziv, you, you've got a map, um, and you pull out the map. Whoops. Wrong map. That's the zoomed in one. Correct map. Yes, the Bent Pyramid, uh, far to the northeast, uh, past the oasis. Uh, you seem to recall something about that being holy. <clears throat> Perhaps we should head there. It's as good a place as any. I don't have anywhere to be. What do you know of the Bent Pyramid? And I'll ask him and Akeem. What do y'all know? Uh, Akeem looks as well. I believe, Gasmir, you've studied this more than I, but isn't that a place where of one of the Octopot's gods, isn't that their domain? Mm. Yes. So in my research and travel, looking for the pieces of this puzzle... I've come across the Bent Temple before. I have <clears throat> explored uh, exclusively towards the north um, where <clears throat> Antip uh, Antipot had built a temple uh, for one of his uh, minions. And this temple was, was thought to be structurally unsound. Uh, I believe that engineering wise, there was nothing wrong with this temple. I believe that it is. it was built on holy ground that was divine, a, a divine field for the elder gods. I believe so, that is why the great pyramid, the great bent pyramid cracked and fell towards the sands. Okay, says, I've heard, I've heard this rumor as well. Uh, a conspiracy theory, if you will, that uh, we have heard scouts say that the pyramid uh, fell almost inward. Uh, we didn't know if perhaps the Kraken had caused it or something, but I have heard rumor that it is possible that the old gods may have been at play. I, I hope that is the true part of the story. Uh, I, I keep the faith. And you see uh, Gaz uh, kind of do a uh, a kind of... <laughs> a weird uh, a, a symbol of faith with the bird yeah, 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 yeah absolutely absolutely okay. and it almost gets the whole like gill flooded gill thing it looks really awkward but so be it but it looks small it's a very small a petite <laughs> that, like a, that looks like a mummy I'm a little concerned <laughs> yeah <laughs> I didn't even think about that so as uh, as the three of you kind of ruminate this uh Akeem has asked uh, Gazmir, he goes, uh, Gazmir, come please. Uh, Sabif, Sabif, uh, you sold this map before, correct? And Sabif walks over, the older gentleman with a longer gray beard who sold the scrolls and the things in town. He reaches over and goes, ah, oh, yes, yes, I did. Uh, it, and uh, Akeem goes, is this, is this the most recent map? Is this, is there anything? He goes, oh, no, no. The Oasis is a little different now. And, and, uh, he comes over to Gazmir, and, and between Gazmir and, uh, and, uh, and Akeem and Sabif, he takes the map that he's given Ziv and kind of makes some additions and corrections, because the maps of, of Harakir are always changing based on the sands of, of, of Octopod is constantly burying and the topography is changing. So he's kind of drawing in some of the recent things that scouts and hunters and gatherers have kind of gone out and found. He's, he's kind of updating the map. Now, as that is happening... Uh, Ziv, you, you, uh, you kind of get yourself lost in thought as you look down at the sword and, uh, it, what would you like to do in this moment with the sword? I'm, I want to basically let it know if you have someone that you belong to and you need us to lead them, bring you to them, 
gonna need a little help. Um, you you kind of get this vision in your head of of a of a what looks to be a collapsed building in the middle of the desert, which kind of coincides with the story that you're hearing, and you also sense around it like. Not just that, but you kind of like, you have this vision that if you were to, if you were, as you come across, as you just go a little bit more to the east of that, uh, there seems to be a cave and you see a, an entrance cave that has seen, kind of been opened up from, it looks like a recent cave, uh, just to the east of whatever this, this failed construct is. I want to look up to Durandal and Gaz and say, the sword just told me that there's a cave to the east of the pyramid that we should go to. So, let's head that way. The sword Ziv. talks to you? This is great, Ziv! This is unbelievable news! <laughs> hello? Hello? <laughs> Alvin, hello? Can you hear me? Hello? <laughs> so he's like, you see this little yes. gnome like kind of leaning down on the blade trying to get it to, to talk. Uh, Absolutely. It doesn't seem to respond to you. Of course not. It's that beautiful girl in high school. She's not talking to me. Oh, no. <laughs> so as, it, it shuns me as well. Shuns me. So as... Very stoic. As that is happening, um, there is a, a moment where um, Akeem is working over the barkeep, and he goes and he brings food over, and there's a moment where dinner is being served. Ziv, you don't really care for such things. You're more just <laughs> contemplating the blade. And also you kind of get lost in the thought of finding Nala. So you're, you're lost, the memory of this lost love. And, and you kind of think hard and long about the fact that there's somewhere out there, the spirit of your lost love is in chains and still in, enslaved to, to Octopod. Uh, Gazmir, you're excited at the blade, but you're also going over the map. And as that is happening, a, a meal is brought to Durandal and and, and uh, this this lady uh, with this jet black hair kind of goes and brings you this and you look up and as you look at her and you just you momentarily think about about Miriam about your mother uh, it, the hair kind of just kind of like reminds you uh, of of your entire journey and why you're doing this is to try to reconnect Miriam and uh, with with her lost love uh, your, your father this this Lord Brunwald. And as you're doing that, you're you're kind of putting these pieces together. Um, you hear a, a clink, and uh, and you look outside the window, and next to the fire, uh, you see you see a a a, a younger man uh, with with a small like a practice blade and a small boy, uh, and he's he's kind of training him with the blade and kind of telling him how to use the blade. And isn't that moment that you're kind of lost in thought that you remember a similar moment, but it wasn't your father that taught you the blade; it was actually your mother. And, and as you were watching uh, these two kind of spar outside and, and teaching him the very basics of, of, you know, block, parry, thrust kind of thing. And as you're watching that, you're kind of remembering almost some of the wording was almost identical to what you heard your mother tell. And is at this point, you've kind of like lose yourself in the mind. And, and I want to uh, bring this image up of a, of a young Durandal and his mother, uh, Miriam, and, and this is an image of, of you growing as a boy and, and, and your mother being there. And the thing that you've known about your mother that most don't is from the time that you have been a child to the time that you're an adult, she has never aged, not one day. She is forever caught in the same age, and her beauty it seems to be eternal. Uh, and she's always telling you about the greatness of Lord Brunwald and how they, the, the mist has separated the two of you and that it should have been him that taught you how to ride. It should have been him that taught you how uh, to, to, to wield the blade. And it has been your life's mission to figure out a way to, to, to bring the two of them back together, to traverse the mist. And you've gotten a piece of that. You've, you've figured out uh, the, the Vistani have a way to do it. And they traveled here. And now you've been kind of sidetracked because... You're with Ziv, and Ziv is on this quest, and you understand, like, he's been separated from his love. So you're kind of at this odds of, like, do you continue the quest that you're on? But you also want to help Ziv in his endeavor as well. And then all of this gets interrupted by this, this miscreant, this idea of this other individual, this, this Baltazar, uh, this very dark individual that seems to serve your father, or at least claims to, and you suddenly remember that you haven't seen him in a while. Yes. And that bothers I going, you. I was going to ask next 
if they have seen uh, our pale friend. He's pale. He has a rather smoldering dog. Um, that... Akeem comes by and goes, No, I haven't. I, I'll ask around, but I don't. And he, and he reaches over and goes, oh, Where's, 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 uh, sorry, let me get my help. Beck, Beck, where's Beck? Beck, Beck. And he comes in and uh, you see Beck come out. Uh, big burly guy, someone you met before, the, the tailor that actually sold you the clothes. He comes out and you're kind of noticing that some of these vendors in the street seem to be with the heretics of the Falls del Gar makes you wonder how many people in town are actually a part of this. Uh, and Beck, this older gentleman, uh, you know, big burly guy, uh, wearing a, a similar fez, uh, he goes, oh, no, no, but I, I can ask around, I can, and see if anyone else has. And uh, with that, uh, Beck leaves, and Akeem goes, well, we'll see if we find Z. Before Beck walks off, I want to tell him, we know of him, we do not trust him, be on your guard. But of course, I, I will only see if anyone has seen him about. And uh, with that, he exits. And as he exits, um, you hear the, the the door opens. You think you hear the door like screech, like, eh, but it's actually, ah, as the door opens. And you see Beck kind of stop and he kind of does the door again and it doesn't make the sound. And he goes, well, that's, well, that's odd. And and he looks out and, and you hear another scream in the distance and, uh, Beck closes the door and goes, oh, Akeem, some, something is wrong. Something is amiss outside. Uh, quick, hit the lights, hit the lights. And uh, with that, the barmaids are like moving over to kind of extinguish the torches and everything and, and the candles in the room. Um, with that, Durandal, you notice that something is wrong. Um, you seem suddenly aware that something is moving into the area, something dark. Um, can I try to... To strain my ear to hear if it sounds like what I heard earlier, flapping. Uh, perception check. Or if it's like scurrying on the ground. 25. Uh, 18 plus 7 for perception. Uh, your Dampier ears are very keen, and what you hear in the distance, um, you hear what seems to be swirling sand. Um, you heard this similar sound um, outside whenever... You, you encountered the storm of Octopot. You hear a, a smaller, similar version of that just outside. You hear uh, a cry and a whimper and a sudden silence. Hmm. I'm going to say this sounds like the, the fist, the sands of Octopot. Albeit subdued, but it's what it sounds like. What else could that possibly be? Ziv, what do you want to do? You hear Durandal say this. I'm standing up with the sword, ready for whatever, because I don't know what's going on. Give me a perception check. You, you There's a, a burnt smell in the air of ozone, as if you smell arcane energy. I'm going to turn on the, uh, the eyes and look out the window. What's the range on this? This is a wild magic barbarian ability. What is the range on this? Yes, it is magic awareness. 60 feet. Wow, okay. So your eyes kind of begin to glow. Uh, you look out the window, and you do see this magical essence. It's almost like a, a magical wind that is kicking about outside. Uh, you see the wind kind of go around and encircle uh, what looks to be a villager on the outskirts. Uh, the villager is picked up off the ground by this magical essence, um, and then the, it, the, the wind just kind of dissipates, and that person drops to the ground. Dead? Yes. It's killing your people. Uh, he was quick. Get everyone inside. Get everyone inside. Ziv, Ziv, you, you must, you must protect us. Uh, our, 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 our warriors are away. Our fighters are away. Can, can you keep us safe? I'm gonna open the door and, and say, everyone inside. Okay, you go to the door. Um, you see several of the um, villagers are are, are running um, your way. Let me get all of them as they are, are kind of making their way, they're running and, and, and kind of quietly like oh, they panic because they know something is wrong as they all start running. Uh, is Ziv, it still swirling or is it like gone? It, it, it kind of disappeared into the wind and you still sense it in the air. Uh, it seemed like it came together, it coalesced and then dissipated in the wind. Uh, as all of these walk out, uh, Ziv, you look up and it looks like there's a very large, um, you're not quite sure what. There's some type of weapon of war 
up on the uh, the the wall to the south here, and you see someone up there that's arming it, and uh, you see him kind of like cranking the arm. He goes, "Is it? Is it the Kraken? Is it the Kraken?" And you hear this this this, this cranking, this uh, c- coming from from down this direction over here, um, and and he's cranking like and getting some giant like looks like a harpoon that he's putting in this and kind of cranking it like this as it, as this large rope is like pulling it back. I want to run over here and say, get down, you fool, jump down, and I'm going to catch you. Um, I, you say that, um, as soon as you say that, he goes, what is it? And you see him holding the torch. Um, you see this, the arcane energy kind of drop down and begin to coalesce around him. You see what looks to be the form of some type of individual in that, um, pull out a blade and run it through the back of the individual who then falls all the way down to the bottom. I want to point my sword up at it and say, come and face me, you evil fart. And with that, we will roll initiative. So with that, we're going to jump back in. We've got Gazmir. You're going to be acting first. Uh, You're actually way back here. All right. So Gazmir, you're inside. Uh, Everyone's kind of like piling inside. The only person outside right now is Ziv. Uh, There seems to be something happening here. This person is, is toast. He's dead. Uh, And you've got people kind of running around. So Ziv, you're looking up at the top of the like this the small little tower here with some massive weapon on it, and you see a body drop to the ground. You see a, a body of something has formed or coalesced there, uh, and what looks to be, uh, as you look up, you see uh, this body kind of coalesce in there. You see these yellow eyes kind of light up in the mist itself, and it, and it's that point that you finally get to see a little bit of what this looks like. And here you see this this body form, oh. and you see these yellow eyes light up in the mist as this swirling mist uh, or sand is kind of kicking around as whatever this is is brandishing the sword and has just killed this thing. Uh, and now let's bring out uh, our tokens. So this thing is basically you're about twenty feet up, so you're probably with the R with the angle and everything, probably about thirty feet up. Is it looking at me? Yes. I want to uh, point at it. With the sword. Okay. And with the other hand, I want to be like... Oh, you're just going to taunt it? Taunt it forward? Okay. Are you going to nice. hold your action for it? Is that what you're doing? Mm-hmm. Okay. All right. So you're going to just sit there and kind of taunt it and hold your action. Uh, with the intention of knowing that the people are going in behind me, and if it disappears, I want to turn and focus on one of them to see if it's trying to pick off somebody else. Okay. So you're, you're basically just trying to look around. I'm trying to get it on to me to get the other people... You're, you're creating a barrier. Yes. I got you. All right. So that uh, that is what you're doing. All right. So let's pause on that. Now let's go down line. So Gazmir, you're first, and then Ziv is taunting, and then we go to Durandal. So, right. so Gazmir, seeing this happen, <clears throat> watches Ziv run outside with the, the blazing eyes and kind of take off outside. Um would, would I be familiar with this uh, this type of uh, you haven't or seen monster? it yet you're not out there yet okay okay so let's uh, make our way out there I'm gonna uh, move my okay a little different than the monk <laughs> I'm right. almost gonna make I'll make it to the threshold and kind of peek through and and get a see if I can keep an eye on Ziv All right, so whatnot. so you run out uh give me a you see this that you see Ziv kind of like motioning at this thing to come towards him as you look up you see this thing kind of coalesce you see the yellow eyes light up brandishing some some strange blade and as you look up at that uh give me a religion check to see if you know what this is okay I was sleeping that day in Sunday school, I, I believe. You don't know what it is, but you don't like it. Um, all right, so you just, you've, this is your move action. You've moved up. Right. Do you want to do right. anything with your action or bonus action? I would like to, with my uh, action, I would like to cast, um, I, I'm sorry, I can't really see on the map where the, uh, there we go. Okay. okay, I got you. Um, and I would like to cast a mind, uh, mind spike 
Mind Spike, okay? Yes. Yeah, yeah it does have a save. I'm sorry. Here we go. Uh, mind Sliver. I'm sorry. It's a, a intelligence. Yeah, it's a, a intelligence save of 14. Okay. Uh, let me roll it. Um, I made. A, I rolled a 14. So I passed it. Okay. And so okay, what does that do? So um, you pass the test. Uh, it's save or suck. Oh, so, okay, so so no damage. All right. So yeah. you go. You you. What does it look like as you try to cast the spell? It's the first time we've seen you like actually okay, cast excellent. the spell. So um, my uh, my magic. Um, this mind sliver. Um, as he starts casting it, the mana starts to build, and you see these uh the, these uh, hieroglyphs, um, and you also see uh. Um, these visions of these small, um, almost like a, 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 a godlike one of the statues that you guys found, except the face is kind of in, um, it, it's un, it's, it's unseeable. Okay. Um, if you will. And it basically kind of, it rolls out and, and bolts towards this person, like clawing at it with, uh, All right. with, with great this, description. Uh, so as the hieroglyphics and you see the God, you see this bolt kind of go out and clawing at it. It, it goes to hit him. He kind of like it's almost like the mist itself kind of shifted him out of the way, uh, and, and you see him, the whole thing of him kind of like dissipate and reappear an inch away from it to dodge the blast. Um, with that, Ziv, it is your turn. This is this is what you did. You're kind of calling it towards you, holding your action, and now it is Durandal's turn. All right. Let's see, five, ten. 15, 20. I'm going to hop over the gnome, if possible. Sure. 30, 35. That's as far as I can go. Okay. Um, okay. Reluctantly, I'm going to pull out my bow. Okay. Actually, scratch that. Let me dash. Okay. And that's going to be an extra... Was that 30, 35 feet? Yeah. Let's dash. Yeah. Um, how tall is the wall? 20 feet. All right, I'm going to scale the wall. So that's five and then 25, 30, right here. So I'll be up on top of the wall. Okay. All right, so so basically you run out and then you're basically using your spider climb of an innate ability as a dampier. You, you scroll up to the top of the wall, uh, brandishing both of your blades, uh, kind of surveying the, uh, the, the situation. Uh, at this point, uh, whatever this thing is, it just reaches and just lunges forward and moves towards Ziv. Now, as soon as it lands in front of Ziv, Ziv, you get your action. You're basically okay. holding the blade, waiting for it to land. I'm going to come down to where I don't risk to Randall and try to cut this thing. Is there anything you would like to do with your bonus action before you attack? Oh, I will rage. Oh, you will rage. <laughs> All right. As soon as and he lands the electrical energy of your wild magic kind of surges in your body as you pull your blade up. Roll on the wild magic table to see what type of rage we're getting. All right, let's see. D8. It's been a minute since one of these has been really good. How's a seven? What's it gonna do? It's the electrical tendrils around the ground around me making it difficult terrain on a flying monster. No, it's it, it's holding into the ground. That's good. All right, so you're now, but you're still raging, and now you've got your blade. So now make your attack. Okay, so this. this ooh, okay. First, is it advantage because Danny's or no? No, it's, it's not advantage. Okay. Right, so, so that's an eleven. Uh, or twelve. You slash at it, it immediately pulls out its blade, and you hear a king as he parries the attack. The second one. Okay. Is a 16. He also parries that attack. Hmm. So you pull out, the, you're, you're attacking with this magic blade. Now remember, it is a plus one blade if you're adding that. But he's he parries both <laughs> of your attacks with the blade. Uh, it seems to be some type of cold blade, like some giant long sword. Your sword is much bigger than his, uh, but he's very fast with it uh, as he just easily parries both of your attacks. Uh, and with that, it is his turn. Uh, he will then uh, attack you back with his blade. Um, he'll miss the first one with a mighty eight. Uh, and he'll, he'll hit you with the second one. Uh, Thank God. Huh? 
Yeah, you need I to. I need him to hit me. You need to hit. All right. So take... Uh, I was going to lose my rage because I missed, and if he didn't hit, I was... You're going to take nine points of slashing damage. Pre-haft or already? Or... Uh, that's total, so you'd half that. So you're going to take four. So you take four points of slashing damage. Um, he then, um, as a bonus action, he uh, pulls the blade up again, and he'll attack you a third time. Uh, as he does that, there's this crackling yellow energy that kind of irradi- like radiates off of the blade as he brings it down. Um, what's your AC? 15. You parry the attack. As you parry the attack, there's this blue crackling energy that kind of dissipates off of your blade, and it meets his yellow, and the yellow and the blue kind of smash off each other. And there's like this energy that kind of explodes off of it as you parry a a very mighty blow. And quickly realize that you don't want to get hit with that. Um, And with that, it is Gazmir's turn. Okay, um, after seeing the the light show uh, in front of me, courtesy of... uh... My, my favorite eight foot monster, Ziv. I'm going to, Gazmir is going to move. I'm going to cast Blur upon myself. And then for my cantrip action, I'd like to fire my Eldritch Blast at the baddie. Can you do that as a as a bonus action? Oh, no, no, I cannot. I'm sorry. I'm, I, I, it's, uh, it's a cantrip. Oh, no, cantrip. I can't. It's action. It's my bad. Action. So you cast Blur. Right. Yeah, Blur. All right, so you run up, you cast Blur, and this little gnome kind of shifts, and he's it looks like he's moving a lot faster than he is because he's blurring, um, but that, that's what he's doing. There's, there's, there's multiples of him kind of blurring about, and with that, um, we go to uh, Ziv. It is now your turn. You were locked in combat with this thing. Uh, did Danny go? Or did Danny... Oh, Danny went because yeah. I was waiting. Right, okay. right, right. You're good. I'm next. Okay, we're going to take two swings again. Okay. Um, 23. You, he goes to parry your attack. At the last second, you shift your attack. You bring the blade in. You do connect. Roll damage. <laughs> oh, <laughs> snake eyes. You rolled snake the eyes. dose. All right, so 10. 10, 10 points of damage. Still damage. Uh, that's is your it first. undead? Uh, it is. I don't know what the sword does. Okay. It says it likes to kill undead. It sure does. Roll another D8 damage. So All right. 16 total. 16 total damage. All right. So it, as you hit, the light radiates off of the blade. It seems to cut. There's like this screeching sound as you pull the blade back. Roll again. 15. Uh, he parries that attack. Uh, so you hit him one time, and then uh, he quickly kind of steps back and, and blocks off the other attack. Uh, at that point, now it is. Do you anything you want to do with your bonus action? I don't know that I have. Yeah, I think you're good. Okay. With that, we go to. The I, it's a bonus action. I was gonna say, uh, hurts, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> all right, and with that, we go to uh, Durandal. It is now your turn. Um, all right, I'm gonna. What is this thing right here? This thing right below me. This uh. It's a chain. There's a all chain. Right. Can, there's basically two walls. There's a chain going Stop back it. and forth. It's like maybe they hung meat on it or something. But you could run across it. Yeah, that's what I want to do. Okay. Try at least 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35. Okay. Um, am I at this ballista? You are. Um, could I try to move it? You could. Okay. I'm going to aim it, it at this. Can thing. it aim down? Yes, it can. Okay. Okay. All right, um, so your turn will be spent turning this thing and, like, cranking it and basically getting this ballista aiming down. Like, you're basically, like, cranking it and, and getting it to move up, and so it's aiming down towards this thing. So this your turn will be spent moving and then cranking this thing up. Uh, is there anything right. you want to do with a bonus action? Are you good? Um, I think I'm good. I don't think there's much I can do. Okay. Um... As soon as uh, it become, as soon as you are kind of cranking that up, you hear this this almost this this guttural hissing sound um, coming out of of this this thing, and you hear this this ashnoth, and he kind of hears as he's kind of like gutturally saying something. As he says that, um, the the mist around him begins to 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 like 
dissipate and kind of multiply as others of these things seem to be showing up. Oh. These look a little different than what you fought before or what you're fighting now. This does look different. Have we seen him before? No. Okay. But he basically multiplied himself and he's basically like got clones running around. So these other two uh, jump up and one runs towards Gazmir. The other runs um, to flank Ziv. Uh, the one on Gazmir is going to run up. And how does Blur work exactly? Uh, you're going to be a disadvantage uh, to hit. Yeah, that's what I thought. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I'm guessing uh, an 11 doesn't hit you. Correct. Correct. All right. Um, so that was one attack. Um, he will then uh, use his bonus action to attack again. Uh, pulling out a similar blade. Uh, again, an 11 does not hit you. Uh, the one behind uh, Ziv is going to roll with advantage because he's flanking. Uh, the first attack is a 23 uh, that will hit, and he will do slashing damage behind you. Uh, you do half this 11, we'll call it 10 damage, and you only take 5. So you do get stabbed in the back for 5. Um, he will then unleash his second attack. Uh, again, he will hit you and do 6, uh, so take 3 damage after rage. Um, that was its turn. It is now Gazmir's turn. Okay. Um, all right. We are going to, we are going to use our, um, okay. That sounds great. We're going to use our, um, Eldritch Blast. Okay. And we are going to hit the one. Um, so uh, am I correct in seeing that there's one flanking Ziv and one uh, in front of Ziv? Yes. Okay. Um, so and there's I'm one right to... next to you. Okay. So I'm going to use my one Eldritch Blast on the one behind him and the other Eldritch Blast on the dude in front of him. Okay. So you're going to take uh, two. You basically, you cast Eldritch Blast and it forks and you can hit two targets. Absolutely. That's okay. the plan. <laughs> um, here we go. Alright, so this the first attack will be the one behind him. Okay, first one will be the one behind him. Here we go. Uh, Fingers crossed, boys. Uh, 18 mm -hmm. uh, plus 6 is 24. That will hit. Roll your damage for the one behind him. Okay. Let's do... Oops. I, did, I messed that one up. Sorry. No, it's dude. 5. Just give me your total. Okay, it, uh, 8. It'll be 8 total. 8 total damage. Okay. And then he's also, it's a repelling blast, so he's moved 10 feet away. What's my save for that? Uh, I don't believe there is one. He's moved how it's, far uh, back? Part of the, yeah, it's part of the uh, 10 okay. feet for 10 feet. Uh, each okay. blast. So he just moves two squares, and okay. hopefully that maybe will uh, yeah, yeah. have an opportunity attack. And then the other one I'll roll for, I'm sorry. Okay. The one in front, here we go. Uh, five and 11. That'll miss. All right. Okay. So you hit the one behind him. It doesn't cause an attack of opportunity because he didn't move on his own volition. He got pushed away. Oh, okay. Uh, okay. So he gets pushed 10 feet back. You do hit him for eight points of damage. You miss the other target, the one in front of him. Uh, is there anything you want to do on a bonus action? I would love to misty step my way right next to Durandal, that great looking uh, vampire oh, guy. You are. So you're going to use. All right. So you misty step up top. I got gotcha. you. Oh, yeah. Okay. We're going to be by the guy with the big gun. All right. So you misty step. So you take those shots. You misty step. As you misty step, uh, the thing behind you like takes this wild swing at you and misses. It just kind of slashes into uh, the mist as you disappear and reappear up top. Um, as soon as that happens, uh, we now go to Durandal, who is now aiming this giant ballista down at this thing in front of you or below you. Yes. What is this? A ranged attack? It is what? a ranged attack, and you will get advantage on the attack. So just roll. Uh -oh. My regular ranged is uh, plus eight. Mm -hmm. That's just it. Roll two d20s plus eight. Sixteen. 
All right, so, so 16 24. plus 8 is 24. Um, you take loose. This giant scorpion uh, harpoon shoots out. Um, uh, it, it impales the, the mist of this thing. Roll 4d10 damage. Yeah, yeah, I saw this coming, so I, like, sidestep it as it's coming right. down, just in case. Uh, it does 20 points of damage. Okay. But you do notice that as it hit, it's almost like this, it, it did hit him, and you did you think you heard it, but it seems like the sand kind of shifted away um, from the non-magical attack. Oh. Son of a... Okay. You did hurt it. You do feel like you you nicked it. You nicked it. Uh, so instead of twenty points of damage, you did ten points of damage. Uh, but is there anything you want to do on a bonus action? Um, you did it. You did make an attack. Do you want to use your bats? Yeah. Actually, is it your favored foe? Yes. So roll Absolutely. your d four for your favored foe. Uh, four, it will be halved, uh, so that's two. 28. Okay, and then four. Now, the bats is a magical attack. That's full damage. All right, so we've done a total of 32 points of damage uh, to this thing, and now it is its turn, and now it will attack um, Ziv uh, with his blade. I thought the things attacked me on his turn. We have... Because I have not gone since they attacked me. I missed. Go ahead. It's your turn. You go before it. Oh, yeah. We skipped you. That's my bad. Yeah. So I'm I was gonna, so excited about the ballista attack. I'm going to step <laughs> around in... Never leaving its threat. Right, right. Shifting. Okay. Yeah, I'm shifting around, and I'm going to attack it twice. Okay. Full on Conan swinging this thing around like it weighs nothing. Right, 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 right. Uh, 21. 21 will hit. So roll 2d6 and then 1d8 radiant damage. So here's your 2d6. That's going to be 6 plus, was it 8 damage? Yeah, so 14 And then another plus... 8 damage, or d8. Or d8 or d6? d8. It's another d8, sorry. Yeah, 5. Okay, so 6, 11. What's the total? Was 6 plus 8, 14 plus... Uh, five, so 19. 19, uh, and 32 is going to be 51 total damage that we've done to it. All right, so that... Again! You, and you bring it back. Now, that 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 radiant energy is sparkling and really hurting this thing. Um, swing again. God, it's like I can't hit it back to back. So that's 16. Uh, parry. He parries that attack. Um, now it is its turn. It turns as after you hit it with that attack. Pulling out his blade, he swings at you. God, I saw the 20 and it just rolled right off of it. No. It just rolled right off of it. Does a 17 hit you? Yeah. Okay. Uh, so he's going to do a massive five. We'll call it four. Half it down to two because you're raging. So take two, two small points of damage. He's going to swing again with his blade. Um, 14 won't hit you, right? Nope. Bonus action, he calls upon the necrotic energy as it uh, crackles the yellow energy of Octopot as he swings it down to try to hit you again. Ooh, miss. He's going to miss you with that. Nope. All right, so you, you again, parry. You, 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 you're kind of telegraphing it as he kind of pulls up the energy and drops it. You easily parry the attack. And uh, with that, we go to Gazmir's turn. Apologies. Apologies, we not yet. It's the other two people's turn. Um, let me take a look at their movements. Hmm. Yep, he flies up here. Let's see, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25. Alright, so both of these things kind of like just kind of rise up and kind of like hover up to the top where you two are. Uh, one goes behind Gazmir and will make his attack. Uh, with disadvantage, because you are still boring. Uh, I rolled a nine both times. Uh, plus six. Does fifteen hit you? Oh, I believe it does. Uh, yes, it does. Yeah, I think I got gotcha. you. Right. Oh, you did get me. All right. Yep. Uh, so you're going to take a mighty eight points of damage. Now make a constitu uh, concentration check to see if Blur stays up. Oh, so you got to beat a ten. 
that's just a straight d20, correct? Correct. You do. You keep your... All right, so now his second attack. Uh, miss. 12? 12 misses? No, no, not 12. I apologize. No. 10. 10 misses. 10. Yeah. 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 All right, so he swings and misses with that attack. Uh, so you blur it out. You, he does draw blood. You're... You know, it's been a while since you've been cut, so you're about bleeding. Uh, and now the other one is going to attack uh, Durandal. Uh, he makes his first attack. Uh, misses. Uh, with a mighty one. And his second attack, 12 plus 4, is, does 16 hit you? Uh, yeah, my AC is 16. The AC is 16. Uh-oh, nice. Danny, he drew blood. He did draw blood. You, Oh, he drew a lot of blood. Take 12. Dang it. All right. After he lands that attack uh, as a bonus action, he is going to attack again. Uh, that's going to be a 7 plus uh, 13 does not hit you. All right, so that's a miss. Right. All right, so he does, but he did hit you for 12 points of damage. As he slashes you, uh, it is now Gazmir's turn. Okay, Gazmir is going to Eldritch Blast... Um, I'm gonna Eldritch Blast uh, the one in front of me and uh, and send another one over uh, to the one in front of Durandal. Okay. All right. So first blast the one in front of you. Go. Yes, sir. Here we go. Uh, twenty-five Dang. is gonna hit. How much damage are we doing? Uh, we are gonna do a one D ten plus eight. So six, so okay. six. All right, and then that also moves him ten feet away. Okay, and then here goes the other one uh, for Durandal. Miss. Ah, okay. Um, okay. And with my bonus action, I am going to um, I'm going to send some healing. Um, I'm going to send three die three d six of uh, the healing over to Durandal. Ooh. I have, uh, I'm sorry, let me get it up right here. It's the nice. um, 3d6. Yeah, it's a healing light as a bonus action I'll, within 60 feet. I'm going to use 3d6 out of my 66 pool to help heal Durandal. Okay, so nine. Nine, so you heal for nine. Thank you. Uh, so as he does that, the, these hieroglyphs kind of pop up and you see this, this healing energy just kind of like come at you. The cut that you had taken before, while pretty pretty gassy pretty bad it already it already closes and you're still sore but it, you're not like openly bleeding from the wound that you just gotten uh but you're still pretty angry at the thing that stabbed you uh and <laughs> yeah. with that it is ziv's turn um let's see i'm still raging that's not a problem i kind of want to uh, well, I can't really step away from it without it attack of opportunity to me. So I guess I'll just kind of keep moving around it. Okay. Just trying to keep my feet. You know. I understand. I, it is shifting around. Uh, it, it is not leaving you. It is. It is still standing in the crackling energy that you're, you're holding it there. You have its attention. Uh, yes, that does hit the seventeen plus eight. I think twenty five will hit. Uh, and with that, uh, roll your damage. So this is 2d6 for the blade. 12! You rolled two sixes. Uh, plus, what is it? Plus eight damage for you? Plus eight. So that's 20. 20 damage. And then roll another d8 for uh, the, the holy energy. 23. Of the blade. 23 damage. We've now done 74 points of damage to it. Uh, that blast seemed to take something out of him. And now swing again with your mighty blade. Galvin strikes with the, the mighty blade. Can't get the second one. I saw the 15. Cannot hit twice. I cannot hit twice. It rolled down to five. All right. And with that, um, so you, you're, you're taking chunks out of it. You're keeping its attention on you. And uh, with that, it is Durandal's turn. Now, Durandal, you've got this thing in front of you. Go. All right. I am. It's two swings with the scimitar. Right. And then one with the short sword, correct? Correct. So we're level five now. So he's got two swings with the main hand. And one swing with the honor. So let's do your main hand attacks first with the magic blade. Uh, so 19 with the Sword of Vengeance is going to hit for 9 points of slashing damage. Uh, so that's... He's taking 17. He is your favorite foe, so go ahead and roll another D4 damage. He isn't, but I'm going to move it to him. You're going to move it to him, okay? Yeah. D4, correct? Yeah. 
on one extra damage to him. Okay. All right, and then we'll do the bats. All right, let me roll. And then the second attack with the Sword of Vengeance is a 21 total, um, because you rolled a, a 14 plus 7 is 21. To do another 5 points of slashing damage to it, so that brings it up to 27 total damage. Then now, attack with your offhand. Point. Right. So here's your offhand attack. Uh, 22! Yeah. He's hitting all of it. Uh, for 9 points of damage. However, that is not a magical blade. Uh, while you do do damage, it seems to, it is not quite as effective. Uh, I shaved so, him a little. Yeah, so we'll take yeah. another four points of damage. We half that down to make that uh, 31 total. Uh, and with that, we go to... Uh, it's their turn. Uh, the the thing that's in front of, of Ziv uh, is going to uh, marshal his ability and swing uh, twice. His first attack will be... I think that's a miss. Hold up. I get an 8 plus a 15. Is that going to hit you? I'm a 15 armor oh, class. So he does hit you for 15. All right. So he's going to hit you with his attack. He's going to do 8 plus 4. It's going to be 11 damage. Half, we'll call it 5. His second attack uh, is going to mm -hmm. hit you. Now for another D8, uh, 1 plus 4 is 5. Call it 4. Take 2 points of slashing damage after the rage uh and then he is going to uh call down the thunder again summoning more power from octopot to swing down and try to smite you and he rolls that's gonna hit that's gonna hit all right so this attack is going to do a d8 slashing so this you get to half which is gonna be two uh plus four six will take three points this you get to half so it's to take three and then he's gonna do 2d8 necrotic damage which you don't get to half uh, so take 12 points of necrotic damage. As he cuts into you, uh, there's a, some of your electrical energy kind of seems to fade off one side as it kind of saps some of the energy from you as he attacks and hits you with that uh, blade. Um, and now it is the uh, the other's turn up top. The one up top on Durandal will make his attack. Uh, the first attack is going to be a 17. That's going to hit Durandal. Durandal will take uh, 6 plus 4 is 10 damage. With the first attack, with the second attack, he will be a 12 plus is 16 will hit you. Yeah. So you took that and now take another eight points of damage. Okay. And now this other thing um, is going to, after it's seeing Durandal getting beat up, it's going to go and flank Durandal and try to stab Durandal in the back. Uh, he gets advantage on the attack. That's going to hit. So Durandal, take another stabbing. Another 12 points of damage. Uh-oh. Right. We're getting close, folks. I don't know what his health is. but Oh, he hits you again. It's it, There's a whole lot of stabbing. Oh, Lord. The DM did it. I rolled another 12 points of damage. I'm down. And Durandal has dropped. Uh, he falls to the ground. You hear the clattering of blades as, the, as he falls to the ground, and, and Durandal is, in fact, down. At that, it is Gazmir's turn. All the stabbing. Wow, that was brutal. Okay, um, so uh, just a quick meta question. Um, with my bonus action healing, um, as far as that, with somebody that has zero hit points, will that just bring them above to yes, one, will. or will that... It brings okay. them up. So whatever you heal them for, it gets It'll all push up. them to one. No, no, no. Oh, he'll get the up to... Whatever you whatever roll, roll, that's what he gets. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so then we're going to shoot our um, horse. We're going to Eldritch Blast uh, both of them to get them off, and then we'll use our bonus action to heal Durandal with the rest of our healing. Uh, okay. All right, so Eldritch Blast number one. So that'll be on the yes, first sir. target over here. Roll the first attack. Yes, sir. Here we go. Uh, so the first one's going to be a 17. Okay. Uh, plus 6, 23. So you do hit that one uh, and do your damage. Okay, let's do... Yeah, we want to roll these separate. So let's go ahead and do the first one. The 17 will hit. 
So that's going to be 5 plus 3 is 8. So he takes 8 damage, bringing him up to 39 total damage. It also pushes him 10 feet away. You push him up, he's still hovering in the air as the Eldritch Blast connects and, and pushes him away from Durandal. He was pulling up his blade to hit a downed uh, Durandal as you basically blasted him, pushed him away. Now make your second Eldritch Blast attack at the other one behind yeah. him. Yeah, not, not, not messing with my buddy on my watch. Mm -mm. Uh, 18 is going to hit. Uh, roll mm. your damage for him. Okay. Two. Let's get a 10 on this one, huh, boys? Uh, 3 plus 3 is 6, <laughs> so he is taking a Close. total of 12 damage. But with your repelling blast, again, both of them had swords drawn to off Durandal as you pushed them off. You see they were pretty hell-bent on uh, making sure he was dead. You use both your blasts to push them back away. Now you can use your bonus action to try to heal him. Can I also move? I want to move and occupy Durandal's square. Uh, because I am small, I can uh, occupy his square, and then right. I'm going to uh, cast my uh, healing, the rest of my healing dice on him. All right, so roll 3d6 to use the rest of your healing as you kind of stand above him to kind of protect him. Okay, we need, we need this one to be big. Come on. Oof. Six. Six. Six points oh. of healing. <laughs> a one, I'm a two, zero. and a three, huh? No, no. When you drop, you're at zero. Right. No negatives. Oh, There's no okay. negatives. No negatives in fifth edition. So that means you are now at six hit points. Yeah, I was yeah. a little fuzzy on that ruling. That's why I That's, asked. Yeah, fifth edition, you drop two zero. Uh, okay. All right, so you were at six. Uh, so again, you hear that you feel this, this divine energy come into you, uh, from the brink of death. There was a moment you felt like you were sitting in a glade with your mother back home. And now you're suddenly back here, uh, looking about and seeing that it wasn't a horrible dream. You're just back. And, and with that, uh, we go to Ziv. No time to rest, Durandal. Well, I'm going right. to thank, I'm going to thank my friend, uh, Durandal for bargaining for a greater healing potion and bonus action drink that bad boy <laughs> okay uh what was it how much does that heal for did i tell you no hang on uh greater healing potion i can't remember 3d8 uh, i think it's hang on let me look uh 4d4 plus 4 all right so bonus nice! action you're gonna heal for 17 points of damage <laughs> Um, so you just quickly in between moves, you just quaff the quick potion. You, you smash it on the ground. Like you're at like a wedding or something. And then you pull out the blade. Yeah, and I'm going to wipe my face <laughs> and I'm going to think to the sword. Now, All right, Galvin, you have advantage on your attacks. He has left himself open because of the massive blast. He just hit you with. You I'm have to think advantage. to myself, Galvin. If you're going to show me anything, do it now. Oh, snap. And I'm going to take a swing twice. Are you going to, before you say, I have the power. Okay, sorry. I right, said so swing the <laughs> boy. <laughs> no, I am going to say, I've had about enough of you. I've had about enough of this guy. All right. So, uh, so roll this twice. So a 17, but always roll the second one. This is going to hit, but roll with the advantage just to see. Okay, so roll your first damage. So 2d6 plus a d8 plus 8 uh, for this 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 blade so whew, that's hot um so a five and a six is 11 plus eight it's gonna be 17 oh, no. Add. oh no 19 19 uh and now roll a d8 uh four so 23 damage uh brings that up to a total of 97 damage that we've done to this thing uh make your second attack first roll 13 which is gonna hit or a 15 also gonna okay. hit. so you will finally land both attacks and now roll your damage another 2d6 plus 8 plus a d8 so 2d6 so that's 5 plus 8 is going to be 13 and i'll roll another d8 damage so 13 that'll be another 15 damage so now we have done 112 points of damage to this thing it is still going um and now it is durandal's turn durandal you're back. A small three, three and a half foot tall gnome standing above you. Uh, our hands uh, lighting up uh, with this, this this cackling energy as he's is summoning some power to try to fend off these things from killing you. Um, you reach over and you find your blade. Ooh, that blade compels me. The blade, like 
compels you. <laughs> right the power now, of the blade compels me. Right um, now, they both hit him? Oh, yeah, it's, it's free. It's fair game. Okay. So, I'm going to get up and thank now, my friend. you do have a healing potion that you got, you swindled from the guy last game. What is the, um, is it just regular? No, it is a superior healing potion. Yeah. Um, I had the greater one written down. I don't have the superior. All right. Yeah, I I'm going to chug the that one. one. Uh, all right. So for bonus action, you, you drink the superior healing potion that you traded for last game. Uh, roll 8d4 plus 8 to heal. Lord. All right. Here's the first four. All right. So 10. Now roll that again. Another 10. So heal for 28 total damage nice. as you drink the superior healing potion. And we can thank Discord for rolling up that to have it available in hey, uh, the market that you were able you. to trade for. Um, <laughs> that was a Discord roll. Um, nice. Funny Ooh. enough, it was Brian who rolled that up, who's actually playing with you tonight. <laughs> hey, so, you're welcome. So, so he, he made a healer to heal you, and he randomly rolled up the potion you needed to heal you. So He's done all the healing. He is the VIP of the game tonight. All right, so with that, uh, so that's your bonus action. You still have your main attack uh, that you can do. All right, I'm going to run 5, 10, 15. I'm going to jump off this door. Okay. Wait, I'm sorry. I'm moving him. Yeah. He was on me. <laughs> right, right. Well, maybe you're carrying him under your arm like a football. <laughs> All right, so no you, the, the door is open, and it, you can actually run using your your innate ability to spider climb. You can actually run across the top of the door and stand on top of the door and swing your blade twice. That's what I want to do. So very deftly, like dancing and running on top of the, the the side of the door, you bring out your 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 scimitar of vengeance, gleaming in the night. And take two swings at it. Um, make your attack. And it would be what the short sword? It's just just regular scimitar attack. Your scimitar. Uh, both of them. In your main hand, you're going to attack the same as sword twice. Gotcha. The magic one. So sword of vengeance. Uh, you roll a mighty eight that will miss. Oh, the first and one hit. The first one rolls a 25 and hits. The second one rolled an 8. Uh, that is 5 points of damage. Um, All right, let's do that. And it is your favorite foe, and because of that, and the bats come out, you manage to kill this thing. Yeah. So we have one down. I'm going to grab it by its throat if it has one and it just doesn't. suck its blood. As so oh, you, you, you can't. You can't. As soon as you blow that the sword into it, it just explodes into sand and drops to the ground. There is no I'm gonna, body. I'm going to eat some sand. Then. I'm going to eat some sand. No. <laughs> All right. And uh, with that is its turn. It returns. Um, this thing up top is going to run over and try to stab uh, Galvin. Uh, sorry, no. Uh, Gasmir. And Gasmir will... Uh... Are you still blurring? Yes, I am. All right, so I have to roll that with disadvantage. The first roll was a one and a four. So he's going to miss you the first attack. He swings with his second attack. Um... An 11. He, he dodged both attacks as it just can't seem to find you in the blur. Uh, now the main thing down here that is still uh, wielding this mighty blade and attacking uh, Ziv uh, will make his attack uh, the first of many. Uh, the first attack is going to be a 15, which I believe yep. hits you. Uh, you're going to take uh, 8 plus 4 is 12, so take 6 points because you're raging. Uh, his second attack is going to hit you for, let's see if he hits you, uh, 15 again. Again, mm -hmm. and 15 is a hit. 15 is a hit. Uh, you're going to take 10, so take five points of slashing damage. And now for the final attack, as he pulls down, he will try to smite you from the power of Octopod, and you parry that attack. Uh, you've learned which one you don't. Really I don't hit. like that one. That's the one you want to parry. All right. So you, you've you've fought. You know the boss mechanics at this point. He's telegraphing that last attack, and you've parried it. And with that, uh, it is now Gasmir's turn. <clears throat> okay um so the uh there there's one correct uh right in front of me correct mm -hmm. i'm correct in seeing that okay so i'm going to i'm going to use my um going to use the eldritch blast again okay um yeah okay so let's do one at a time so yes, first sir. attack 
First attack, here we come. Here we go. Let's get a crit. Pretty close. 19 plus close. 6 is 25. That does hit, so okay. roll your damage. Uh, is okay. it D10 plus 3, I believe? Yes, it is. Can All he right. attack, move, and attack? It's all part of the action. Um, so you take six, that's 18 it's taken. Uh, move it also, 10 feet back. So now okay. you can move if you need to do. Well, Absolutely. he's got a second attack, he can hit him again. Absolutely, so we'll um, hit the, we'll hit him one more time with the uh, Eldritch Blast again. Okay. And then we are gonna- Push him off the map, he instantly dies if that happens. I hope so. Yeah, I've, <laughs> I've played many <laughs> video <laughs> games. That's right, that's right. Okay. Uh, 14's not going to hit. Um, okay. So you hit with the first one, you miss with the second one. Okay. Excellent. Okay. All right. And then now we, for movement. Now we are going to, I would like to, um, now am I correct in in, uh, in in thinking that these ramparts here are stone? Yes. Okay, excellent. So we're going to move a bit towards here and we're going to use our stone camouflage and we're going to try to hide with advantage. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> Using his deep gnome ability, ability, he is going to try to hide. That's all I got, baby. That's all like, I got. He's like takes a shot and then kind of runs and ducks between. It's like, don't, <laughs> don't find me. Don't <laughs> find me. Hide, Please don't find me. Please don't find me. <laughs> all right. Uh, with that, it is Zib's turn. All right. Um, two swings, but. There's just lightning pouring out of me at this point, and I'm just frothing. <laughs> just frothing electricity, just bleeding out of you. All right. Um, 11 plus... 9. That's a hit. Let's go ahead and see if both hit. Okay. It does. Both hit. It does. So, 2d6. All right, so this is attack number one, so it's going to be 7 plus another d8. Is going to be seven plus eight is fifteen. Fifteen, and then two. So, so 17. seventeen. All right. So he's taken a hundred and twenty-nine damage. All right. Second attack was already hit, and I roll your damage. Another two d six, which is going to be seven. Uh, so fifteen. Fifteen. Plus. So twenty. Twenty. All right. And with the second attack, uh, you stab it. He goes to, to parry it. The blade, blade, the, the blade breaks, and, and you shatter the blade. As you do that, the entire body of this thing uh, just erupts and just and just a, a, a falls into a, a, like just sand. Nothing left now but sand. Even the blade itself is gone, as uh, whatever these things were are now gone. Is the other one? Can I? Is the other one still there? It is gone as well. Ooh, okay. I am a bloody mess. Cue the victory music. Dun, 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 All right. And, I'm going to uh, pull out... Hold on, Wes. I'm going to pull out one of my new toys and hit you with two second-level cure wounds. Ooh. Nice. Durandal coming in with the healing... Um, what does it look yeah. like as you, as you cast a healing spell? We haven't hmm. seen you do this before. This is a new power you, you Friendly come up bats? With. Friendly bats? <laughs> <laughs> just, just They, they come up and they're, they're kissing you instead of sucking off. Yeah. They, um, they, uh, they have heart-shaped wings? <laughs> <laughs> so you cast, uh, you go up and, and, and summon the energy and, 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 and cut. You're almost passing on some of the own innate healing energy that you have onto him. And as you do that, uh, you heal him for 14 and then 12. So 28 Jeez. points. So you're able to heal him all the way back up, uh, or close to it, I guess. Uh, as, as, you, as the healing magic kind of closes the wound, the electricity kind of dissipates. As soon as that happens, uh, you hear Akeem uh, come running out. He's, quickly, quickly, uh, we, we must all, we must leave here. More of those, more of those things are coming. Quickly, quickly. Um. Uh, and he looks and he goes, um, G Gazmir, please, please, uh, g get your horse and, and camels. We need, we need to, we need to leave. And, and they seem to be all packing up in a hurry to, to leave, uh, this place as more things seem to be happening at the town. Uh, they're getting word that other things are moving in and, and the occupation of Muhar is underway. Um, 
I'm going to look to Durandal and say, I think you should get your horse, sir. Are you sure? I'm fine. Do they have a horse that can take you? They, I uh, I don't tire easily. They have camels. There will be one horse, oh, and they have camels. Okay. They have two camels. A uh, they bring really you... big camel. Right. They bring you. <laughs> uh, they they bring you two camels. Um. There's a larger one and a smaller one. I'll let you figure out which one goes to who. Uh. So the three of you uh, pack up uh, your camel, well, your two camels, your horse. They also give you some provisions, and uh, and uh, Akim reaches over uh to Ziv, and he hands you this small stone, and he says, oh, "Take this." With this, uh, we can communicate, and we'll tell you where we are and, and where we can meet up. It's it's, it's got a, some some unknown magic. I don't understand it, but great distances, we'll still be able to con- communicate with each other. Please take, take. And he hands you a, a sending stone. Nice. I think I would just, um, like, immediately understand what this is and tell him what it is. Oh, this is a sending stone. Oh, <laughs> that's a much better thing than we were calling it, who... Just calling it magic rock, but sending stone that, that has a nice ring to it. I like that. Um, and and you look over and and you see that uh, your Taboxi friends seem to have made it back and they're making some some plans as well to leave. Uh, but they're, they're everyone's packing things up and and they're kind of divvying up things. He goes, uh, we have and, and Akim comes and says we have others out uh, searching uh, for a place that we may uh, hunker down and call home until until this champion appears. And I've seen you wield the blade, maybe. Maybe you are that champion. I, I don't know. But Gasmir, please, please travel with them and keep them safe, and we'll, we'll be, we'll be in touch. And uh, with Absolutely. that, uh, the three I've... of you uh, quickly mount up, uh, grab your provisions, and begin heading northeast. Whatever this bent pyramid is, uh, still in the dead of night, um, leaving and looking behind, uh, the flames of Muhar is still burning in the distance, and you can still hear distant cries and screams of of people of. Whatever is happening there is, seems awful. And, uh, and Gasmir, you know a lot of these people, and you just sense that you just hope that the people that you know got out okay. Uh, that, that seems to weigh a little heavy on you because you, you grew up in this area, uh, and particularly the fishing market right outside as well. And with that, uh, the three of you make your way northeast uh, to across the desert to the oasis, and then finally... Uh, you'll be heading up to the the bent pyramid far far to the northeast and as the three of you ride off uh, the image begins to distort of the darkness and the yellow sands as we once again uh, we are returned to the troll skull manor and and with that uh, we see um, Marcus uh, look over and goes ah I see so many of you have joined us thank you thank you so much for joining us and I I know this tale was hard to tell tonight as a lot of the people in this town, uh, their fate was not not a not a good one. But the old gods seem to be moving, and I am excited to tell you the next part. Uh, please come back next week to hear the next part of our story, and and always remember to tip your waitress on the way out. Uh, thank you, uh, thank you all so much for joining us. Uh, until next week when we return. Uh, so everyone, thank you so much for joining us. We will pick up next week for episode 11 of Masters of Dread. And also be sure to join our Discord as we are marshalling groups together to have community one-shots uh, if you want to join us in playing in some Ravenloft hijinks. Uh, thank you so much for joining us, 